The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hi, I'm Ian Rinyon, an independent media practitioner, freelance writer, and content creator. If you're a Catholic, we all know what happened this weekend. The Pope published an apostolic letter, motu proprio, that, depending on who you ask, had the best of intentions on unity, but ended up becoming divisive. Entitled Traditionis Custodes, the Pope has basically repealed Sumorum Pontificum, the motu proprio his predecessor, Benedict XVI, promulgated regarding the use of the traditional Latin Mass. In other words, the Mass as it was prior to the reforms of 1969. Many traditionally inclined Catholics deemed the liturgical reforms of the 1960s, normally called the Novus Ordo, as valid and licit but inferior at best and outrightly Protestant or even Satanic at worst. The link to the document in question is in the description below if you care about reading it at all. You see, in the Filipino Catholic context, adherents of the old form of the Mass have been shunned by bishops despite Sumorum Pontificum. Most Filipino bishops see it as an archaic, niche community whose only concern is to draw people to the Mass their ancestors were used to. In reality, it is not the case. Many of my close friends, associates, and contacts who attended this Mass are young people. Some are within my age bracket, but many are at least five years my junior. They are utterly disappointed at best and outrageously pissed off at worst with the publication of the document. There were even puns from Filipinos comparing the current occupier of the Sea of St. Peter to the lame duck resident of the Malacanang without the expletives. Now much has been said about this issue and believe me, I would have liked to elaborate about it. From the precedents of the Pope implying disgust over traditionalists since his election, to the deafening silence of the Vatican about his health condition, to rumors that the Pope is dying. With that said, I intend neither to exploit the discussion nor intend for harm to befall the Pope or anyone else who looked down on traditionalists. Like some of the people who have sound insights about the Catholic liturgy, I join their call to courage, discernment, and vigilance on what to do next while emphasizing the importance of prayer. It can also be appreciated that those who have not attended the TLM are also disappointed with what transpired, if not because they personally know traditionalists whose spiritual life was enriched by the old form of the Mass, then maybe because they appreciate the Catholic liturgy as a whole and wish that the new form would be at par in terms of quality and emphasis on the sense of the sacred. But to be fair on both sides of the issue, it is complicated. Yes, I am disappointed this happened since I advocate the sanctity of the Catholic liturgy, both the old and new forms, but then again, the liturgy is not just about rubrics. I mentioned Traditionis Custodes to the current pastor of the parish in my place last Sunday, and when I say pastor, the parish priest, and I cannot help but notice the sigh of disappointment from him. He is very particular about the Catholic liturgy and, I, and even joked that I was too particular. Mind you, he is more of a Novus Ordo priest, but he concedes that the liturgy involves a spiritual aspect to pair it with the rubrics. In short, letter and spirit. And the readings of the New Form Lectionary for the 16th Sunday of the Ordinary Season, Year B, is actually 
prophetic and timely by the time of this recording. It specified about shepherds and the warning on those who lead their flocks astray. I just wonder why some priests reflect on the importance of rest rather, rather than the overall and overarching reflection about Christian leadership in all the scripture selections for that day. I am not saying that it's not important, but I'm just wondering, why on earth do our shepherds emphasize taking a rest when the sheep are being feasted upon by the wolves? And a lot of people are just disappointed that the Pope, as they see it, is feeding us to the wolves when he is supposed to be fending them off. I only hope this would not result in a quote-unquote mass desertion. But then again, in a prophetic language, Pope Benedict XVI already hinted that the modern church would get smaller. How this is openly interpreted, however, would unfortunately remain a mystery. Thus, Alea Yakta Est. The die is cast. But before we go on, I suggest a YouTube channel to watch. Reason and Theology with Michael Lofton is a great balance between faith and philosophy and everything else. Michael actually made his regular Monday, Monday musings about this issue and I have to say it's pretty balanced and I like his points. The link to that is in the description below as well. Now back here in the Philippines, what should be our response? For that, I quote Dennis Matura, the man who started it all here in this country, who was unfortunately ostracized by the very society he founded. I recognize him as the pioneer of the PLM movement in our country, and now more than ever, I value his wisdom. He said, whether the mass is properly celebrated or abused in any rite, as long as it is valid, the mere presence of Christ all holy in the transubstantiated species sanctifies everything. The church is composed of sinners, but it remains holy not because of its human members, but because of Christ, since the church is his mystical body. Now, woe to those who abuse and downplay the sense of the sacred within the liturgy. They are the ones who are worthless. Christ is the one who makes the liturgy worthwhile. It is meritorious, he added, to suffer silently, like the early Christians in the catacombs, as regards to the TLM, rather than pursuing it under the spirit of disobedience in illicit ways which is sinful. We recall Samuel when he said, Doth the Lord desire holocausts and victims, and not rather that the voice of the Lord should be obeyed? For obedience is better than sacrifices, and to hearken rather than to offer the fat of rams. Remember, the end does justify the means. May God protect and be merciful upon his suffering and persecuted children. At this point, allow me to indulge you with a personal anecdote. The first time I attended a TLM was when the USD Center for Campus Ministry, once headed by the late Richard Pascogin, organized one when I was in senior year back in 2012. That was also the time when I first served at such a mass. I remembered vividly what a sight it was, as well as the fact that I had no vestments of my own back then. I remember this post-mass photo of the altar party, basically the priest and the servers photographed for posterity purposes. At that time, I wore my glasses because I had a mild case of astigmatism back then. With all that happened in recent years, I could only look back to that photo with a sense of being overwhelmed. The priest who offered the Mass has since been reassigned twice. Some of the servers have moved forward with their lives yet remained faithful to the Lord in their daily struggles. At least one of the servers has gone to fully support the Society of St. Pius X or SSPX as its regular Mass goer. Another one crossed over to the other side of the Great Schism and became a Russian Orthodox seminarian and recently just got married. And finally, the master of ceremonies for that mass, basically the senior server, was of late 
declared a persona non grata by the same society that helped him oust Mr. Maturan in a coup back in around 2014. They disassociated with the said man due to estafa allegations. Now, I would like to address my peers who are absolutely devastated by the news. I assure you that I am also hurt. I am also in pain. I fully understand and commiserate with you. And I cannot blame you for saying the things you're saying right now. For the record, the TLM was instrumental because it was in a community that catered for it where I found the woman I love next to the Queen of Heaven and Earth. It also enriched both of our spiritual lives. And while we have a lot of ground to cover in all aspects of it, and when I say a lot of ground, yes, a lot of ground, at the very least, we try to center our lives towards the Lord. Also, while we did have issues about the behaviors of a few who exploited the gullibility of some mass goers or who are gullible themselves, it does not take away the sacredness of the old Catholic liturgy, and both of us are disappointed this happened. And finally, I do have a favor for everyone watching or listening to this. Please stay aboard the ship, not because of the captain, but because of her owner. We need able-bodied men and women to instigate a mutiny in the name of the ship's owner and retake her from the helmsman who has gone mad. But if I cannot convince you, if you think abandoning ship is for the salvation of your own soul, or at least for the sake of your own sanity, I understand. I will still give you my hand of friendship and still hope that God may guide you on your way. And should you come back, I'll be one of the first to help you aboard. No questions asked. To end this recording, I take the wisdom of Pope John the XXIII. Whether or not you believe he is a saint, he fully encompassed what our behavior should be in these trying times. I go to bed, O Lord, in peace, for this is thy church not mine. Please take care of me. With all that said, this is Ian reminding you to, at all times, now more than ever, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and pray for your sake and mine. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Ian out.